has affected me, not only mentally, but physically. David died first from pancreatic cancer, and he would keep crying. He'd tell me, Mom, I don't want to leave my boys. And um, Henry died of leukemia. We didn't expect that Henry would die. He was already scheduled for a transplant. So it was really, really hard for me to lose two sons in one year. I think about them all the time. I can't seem to get them out of my mind, especially at night when I'm in bed by myself. I wasn't with David when he died, his wife was, but I was with Henry and it wasn't a very nice thing to see. I don't remember very much. I mean, if my mind was all affected by mine, I, I, I just sat on the chair, watched them put the coffin in, but um, I don't remember very much who was here, who wasn't here. And when I left, I don't remember saying goodbye to anybody because I, I, just, I just couldn't think. Yeah, it affects you deeply. It affects you when you love somebody and then they're, you don't expect your children to die before you. I was 86 yesterday and Henry would always tell me, I'm going to put you down first Mom, on his papers, on his life insurance. I said, no, Henry, don't put me down first. I'll probably die before you. He said, oh, okay. And that didn't happen that way. You know, there was tough times for both of us because it brings back memories for her. And then it's like I didn't know what I was going through because I never went through it. Having that experience in the past taught me a little bit more compassionate, you know, now. At first, it, we thought it was nothing, you know. We thought it was like a, like a harmless little tumor, you know. They didn't detect uh, some spots on his liver which they should have detected when they had first removed his uh, tumor. Went from his, I, I believe his liver to his pancreas and then developed into that uh, pancreatic cancer. I went through a lot up and down emotions, like I wasn't sure what to do, or like if he were to leave, what would happen to my little brothers. Like I freaked out pretty bad because I didn't want to lose my father. And then when, I, then when I found out further on in his sickness and I saw him deteriorate, it, it, got, it got worse, like it got harder for me to see him. I was very angry, very angry. As I put a couple of holes in my, my girlfriend's wall for when I found out the morning that my father had died. But I was pissed though. At first I was pissed at him, but then it wasn't really his fault, you know? So he couldn't do anything. And I figured it'd be better because he's not in pain anymore, you know? So quickly, someone else, one of my loved ones, our loved ones, just, just goes that quick. But I know my father and Uncle Henry had a good bond to each other, and uh, Uncle Henry, I don't know, it's just, it was Uncle Henry, you can't, I mean, it's kind of hard to be without him. I didn't know what to think, like, who else is next, you know? There isn't a day that goes by, I don't think of, you know, my mom and miss her, and I wish that she was around. My mom was diagnosed in 1994 um, of esophageal cancer. Uh, she was actually misdiagnosed at first, so she wasn't treated properly. Um, she was treated for ulcers and um, acid reflux. She was 47 years old, and uh, she got really, really sick, and they did another CAT scan and a blood test and found that she had cancer and it was already in like stage four. Treatment wasn't really an option, but we tried the way that people acted around me that it was almost like a death sentence. I became really angry, um, really angry at God. I didn't really feel like, I mean, I prayed every day for her to get better and she never did, so I didn't think that there was a God for a while. A lot of the, the pain and like emotion that I went through, I was able to like let it out artistically. I do do art that's inspired, you know, from my mom because that's a big thing in my life. and. Uh, it's something you never quite forget. I'm 34 years old and I have uh, breast cancer. Life before, um, 
I can't even remember life before. Before cancer. I've never been asked that question. I thought I had a lot of time. I thought I had, you know, time for everything. I took time with my kids for granted, my family. I was always rushed. When I found out I was in Pittsburgh, I felt it, you know, my breasts had been hurting. And as I touched myself, I could feel it. It was raised where you could see it above the skin. And uh, I was 33 at the time. And I never expected to hear the words cancer. That was the last thing on my mind. The best way to describe it is a total of attack of every emotion. I was numb. I didn't know how to react other than to cry. It's like, oh Lord, what am I going to do? And then when they told me that it was so massive that it was in my, it was from my chest wall to my nipple. Instead of it just being a lump that they can take out, it spread so much. Even though I was afraid I knew I had to still fight for my kids. My girls were the hardest ones to tell. When I came home from the doctor, I had to tell them. I had to tell them what was going on in Pittsburgh. They knew I was so sad and they made me a card and they cut me flowers from the garden and they made me a meal and they brought it up to me. And that just let me know, you know, that they wanted me to feel better. Even though they were scared, they were trying to be brave for me. And I had to just use everything in me to get better for them. I needed my family. Everyone who was any source of support for me was here. I had to come home. I needed to come home. Ready? Friday is my final radiation treatment. As far as my feelings about this last week, I'm excited. I'm finished. It's over. It's over, yay. Let's go eat. <laughs> Never thought I would finish. It took forever. To get through radiation? Get through everything. Get through everything.